Hello again. In my last video, I mentioned that um, we can have function expressions in OCaml and we can have anonymous functions. So what are these anonymous functions and why are they uh, useful? Well, basically, you know, functions in OCaml are expressions. What that means is that um, a function is actually a value that represents a function. It represents a function. This is usually called, as we said, uh, you know, anonymous function, or some people call it lambda functions, or pure functions, or function expressions. But let's not uh, worry about the name, and let's worry about what that exactly means. And the best way to explain it is by taking an example. Now, to declare an anonymous, anonymous function in OCaml, we just use the word, the keyword fun, for function, and then we can pass the variables that we want. If you remember the uh, max function from last time, um, let's say for example x and y, and then use this arrow like this. What this means is that this is an anonymous function that receives two variables and does a bit of calculation. So if x is larger than y, then x else y. And as you can see here, it's an anonymous function, and it's polymorphic, i.e., it receives variables of any type as long as they are the same. They are of the same type, as we explained in the, last, in the last video. Yes. So if I want to use this function, what I can do is, I can uh, put it into parentheses. Yes, and then pass two variables as four and five, for example. And as you can see now, it returns five. So these two variables, they are pa passed to uh, this uh, as parameters to the to the anonymous function, and the logic or the comparison happens, and it gives us b back the return value. We can use as we said before, for example, floats or strings or characters as we uh, demonstrated in the last video. But we, what we can do is, we can actually give it a variable name. Yes, we can give this function a variable name. Please remember this, as, as I said. If you're taking notes, please write write what I say, write it down because we will find these very very useful and very very powerful in our in our coming videos, especially when we start to learn about data structures. Now we can actually give it a very we can actually give it a, a, a name. So let's say for example, let uh, max equal this. Yes. Now. This anonymous function now has a name, and the name is max. So what I can do is I can pass two variables to max now, and the comparison happens as you can see. Yes, the, compari the comparison happens as you can see. Uh, by the way, something I didn't mention before about the variables, I mentioned quickly, is that whenever we have these integer or uh, float variables, and we want to do some arithmetic, arithmetic operations, like for example addition or subtraction or uh, multiplication or division, uh, variable types must be the the same. So if I want to add two integers, and I can say x plus y, x I'm sorry, five plus eight. Let's say yes. If I want to add two floats, I can say eight point zero. Let's say for example, plus dot. That's the addition. That's the addition for uh, floats and the five point six for example. And same the same applies for subtraction, division, and multiplication. If I provide the wrong types. OCaml wouldn't like it, so if I want to add two integers and use uh, the addition for the float, it would not like it. If I use two variables of, of different types, one float and one int, it will not like it again, just as a quick reminder. So going back to the, the, ma the main idea of this video, anonymous functions, that's how we declare them. They are very useful, as we will see. But if we want, we can actually give them a variable name. Going back to what I explained in the last video, uh, the polymorphic function. Polymorphic functions, let me write it down so you can uh, at, at least, where are we? Yes, at least uh, polymorphic functions in OCaml. Yes, polymorphic functions. What are they? The word polymorphic or polymorphism in general, maybe you've come across it in, in different languages. And it, for example, in Java, it means that two or more functions can have the same name. Maybe different variables, different set of uh, 
of, of parameters or a different return type but fun different functions can have the same name in OCaml it's different what it means uh, in OCaml that uh, a polymorphic function is a function that can have parameters of different types we don't have to specify the parameter type and that allows us to pass different parameters as we saw in the last video please go back to the last video if you want to understand more about the polymorphic functions but to declare or to have a polymorphic function we usually avoid for example having arithmetic operations inside them because if we um, arithmetic operations on the on the variables that we pass unless if we sanitize the input ie do some input validation and check if we have uh, for example uh, float variables or variables of float type then we use uh, 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 operations for float type or if they're integer we use for integer and so on and so forth so maybe un unless if we check the input we usually try to avoid these things uh, avoid these pitfalls as you saw in the max function Le but let's try to declare it again so we can uh, get the idea let's for example now return a min so let's say let min of x and y equal um, if x is less than y then x else y so what this will do is it return the minimum of these two variables and it's anonymous as you see here we mentioned this before that these variables here so this is the first parameter this is the second parameter and this is the returned parameter and they are polymorphic or the type is still unknown y and as we can see we didn't specify the type and that in OCaml that tells us the function or the p variable is actually polymorphic enough talking let's use it 5 and 6 and we expect to get 5 min of 5.6 9.0 we expect to get 5.6 if we say a and f as characters we expect to say to see a and we can use exactly the same thing for strings so that's polymorphic functions and that or, or this is what polymorphic functions are and this is what as uh, you know the previous the, the first part of the video the anonymous functions are thank you very much indeed for watching and i'll see you next time